Camilla's first interview was the dumpster fire you expected it would be. I think it would have been a lot worse. I think they clipped out and edited a bunch of stuff um, because it was only 18 minutes long. Um, I would have covered it live myself. I'm glad I didn't because it was so many commercials. Um, it would have it would have just aggravated me. Um, but uh, so we're going we gonna to talk about it now, though. We're going to show some clips. But before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button. Share this out so we get this information out there. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and hit that alarm bell so you know when I'm putting out new stuff. Also, check out my link tree in the description. It has a link to my Patreon. That's where I talk about things that I can't talk about here. Also, follow me on X and um, Instagram as well. All right, let's talk about this news. Now, this comes from PJ Media's uh, Matt Mor Morales. Mor I'm sorry, Matt Margolis. Um, and he reports, did you catch Camilla Harris's first interview as the Democratic Party nominee for president? It was pretty much everything you'd expect from an interview conducted by CNN. Lots of softball questions, lots of word salad responses. CNN anchor Dana Bash actually asked some decent questions, but what really struck me about the interview was that Camilla Harris more often than not avoided answering most of the questions, and Bash didn't seem to be concerned with getting an actual answer. That's true. Uh, you knew things were going to be bad, but um, um, you knew things were going to be bad when Harris really struggled to give a coherent answer to the cliche question about what would you do on day one and that's true she struggled i think i played that clip in the um in the in the in the last video that i made about um about about the interview that's true that's like one of the first you should be ready for that question all automatically because that's something that's a very common question so let's play this clip way here in georgia you have less time to make your case to voters than any candidate in modern American history. The voters are really eager to hear what your plans are. If you are elected, what would you do on day one in the White House? Well, there are a number of things. I will tell you first and foremost, one of my highest priorities is to do what we can to support and strengthen the middle class. Um, when I look at the aspirations, the goals, the ambitions of the American people. I think that um, people are ready for a new way forward. Um, yeah, we, we're looking for a new way, uh, but not with you. <laughs> you are not the new way. You had three and a half years to so-called, quote, unquote, what she said, strengthen the middle class, which she made the middle class worse. She has weakened the middle class. So how would should we expect you to do um, uh, to, to make it better when you're the one that made it bad, terrible in the first place. In a way that generations of Americans have been fueled by, by hope and by optimism. I think sadly in the last decade um, we have had in the former president someone who has really been pushing an agenda and an environment that is about diminishing um, the character and the strength of who we are as Americans, uh, really dividing our nation. And I think people are ready to turn the page on that. So what would you do day one? Day one, it's going to be about, one, implementing my plan for what I call an opportunity economy. I've already laid out a number of um, proposals in that regard, which mm -hmm. include what we're going to do to bring down um, the cost of everyday goods, what we're going to do to invest in America's small businesses, what we're going to do to invest in families, for example, extending the child tax credit to $6,000 for families for the first year of their child's life to help them buy a car seat, to help them buy baby clothes, a crib. Um, there's the work that we're going to do that is about investing in the American family around affordable housing, a big issue in our country right now. So there are a number of things on day one. What about you? Like I said, I played that clip already um, in, in the last video. And when Bash asked Camilla why it took so long to do something about the border, Camilla's answer was just as long mess of poorly connected talking points. Um, Trump War Room tweeted out Camilla Harris's response to being asked why she presided over a record number of illegal border crossings. So let's let's just listen listen to it for ourselves. Here's what she has to say. Oops. 
Okay. Some reason some reason it is not playing. Sorry about that. Let me just go to the actual source here. There were record numbers. Oops. Let me share my screen. All right, here we go. Of illegal border crossings. Why did the Biden Harris administration wait three and a half years to implement sweeping asylum restrictions? Well, first of all, uh, the root causes work that I did as vice. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I thought I was sharing the screen. Let me go to it. Boomer tech, but I'm not a boomer. Okay. Okay, here we go. Vice President that I was asked to do by the President has actually resulted in a number of benefits, including historic investments by American businesses in that region. Um, the number of uh, immigrants coming from that region has actually reduced um, since we began that work. But I will say this, that Joe Biden and I and our administration worked with members of the United States Congress on an immigration uh, issue that is very significant to the American people and to our security, which is the border. Mm -hmm. And through bipartisan work, including some of the most. And I, and I mentioned this before on, on my um, on my last video. She keeps looking down. You see here, she keeps looking down like she's reading something. I, it's, it's weird. As conservative members of the United States Congress, a bill was crafted, which we supported, which I support. And Donald Trump got word of this bill that would have contributed to securing our border. And because he believes that it would not have helped him politically, he told his folks in Congress, don't put it forward. He killed the bill, a border security bill that would have put 1,500 more agents on the border. And let me tell you something. The Border Patrol endorsed the bill. And I'm that. sure and I'm sure in large part because they knew they were working around the clock and 1,500 more agents would help them. That bill would have allowed us to increase seizures of fentanyl. Ask any community in America that has been devastated by fentanyl. Seizures, seizures of fentanyl. I think she's drunk. I think she's drunk. And and the thing the thing here is when it comes to um, uh, the the, the so-called uh, border bill, the border bill um allowed illegal immigrants into this country it did not stop them in from coming into this country it, that's why trump didn't support it in the first place what passing that bill would have done to address their concern and a pain that they've so experienced you would, so you would push that legislation again i just want not to ask only about push it i will make sure that it comes to my desk and i would sign it just one other i mean ridiculous ridiculous because uh, it wasn't really a border bill. Anyone that read the border bill know allowing, I think it was, what, 2,500 or 3,500 uh, um, illegals into this country. How was that protecting the border? Well, but before Harris, Harris's interview with CNN, we learned it would only be 18 minutes long, like I talked about earlier. Um, hardly impressive. It's unclear how long Harris and Vice President to candidate Tim Waltz actually spoke with Dana Bash, but it was probably at least an hour. The fact that CNN whittled it down to just 18 minutes suggests they didn't have much content they were willing to air. Of course, if you caught uh, the preview clip that CNN released, you probably figured that out already and knew it would be a train wreck. Quote, generally speaking, how should voters look at some of the changes that you've made uh, that would have explained some of um, here in your policy, Bash asked. Hold on, let me see if they got the actual clip here. Yeah, I think they got the clip here. Let me just go ahead and play this clip. Generally speaking, how should voters look at some of the changes that you've made, uh, that you've explained some of here uh, in your policy? Is it because you have more experience now and you've learned more about the information is it because you were running for president in a democratic primary 
And should they feel comfortable and confident that what you're saying now is going to be your policy moving forward? Dan, I think the, the, the most important and most significant aspect of my policy perspective and decisions is my values have not changed. You mentioned the Green New Deal. I have... Hold on, hold on. I'm going to play the rest of this, but I just don't understand. How can anyone look at her and be like, yeah, she looks presidential. I want her to represent this country. I want her... I want her to... Uh, uh, have her have her fingers have her hands on on the nuclear the nuclear codes I, I, like I, I don't I don't understand I don't I don't I don't get it I mean she is so fake so inauthentic why would anybody trust her it, just because she's supposedly black and she's a female like that is the dumbest reason to vote for someone always believed and I've worked on it that the climate crisis is real that it is an urgent matter to which we should apply metrics that include holding ourselves to deadlines around time. We did that with the Inflation Reduction Act. We have set goals for the United States of America and by- It's a difference between setting goals and setting deadlines and, and setting like the deadlines when it comes to this stuff. We don't have the technology to push us um, to do like solar, wind, it's just not feasible. Especially, and it's definitely not economical, especially when we have a, a, a much cheaper options like coal, which you can, um, we have clean coal. Uh, we have natural gas that, that doesn't harm the, um, that doesn't harm the environment. Like these, these people, these people don't know what they're talking about and they're pushing this agenda to control us. That's what this green agenda is really about. And then she's trying to pretend like she wasn't um, one of the co-sponsors co or, or um, of the uh, Green New Deal. Like, these people are crazy. Extension the globe around when we should meet certain standards for reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, as an example. That value has not changed. My value around what we need to do to secure our border, that value has not changed. I spent two terms as the Attorney General of California prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, violations of American laws regarding... You know, she really didn't prosecute. She had people doing it for her. She was the um, she was supposedly the one in charge. She didn't really do the prosecution. You can look at her, <laughs> look at her, how she handled herself in these interviews and stuff like that now, and tell that she wouldn't have been a good prosecutor. All you have to do listen to what Judge Joe Brown has to say about her, and and that, and that will tell you everything. Regarding the passage, illegal passage of guns, drugs, and human beings across our border, my values have not changed. So all the stuff that the surrogates are coming out with and saying and how she's um, changing her mind on issues and stuff like that, that's not really true. You didn't hear none of that stuff come from her. It's always someone anonymous or someone from her, uh, an official say this. She never comes out and say that she actually changed her mind behind some of these things that, um, that, are, that is unpopular. But Harris had one line memorized for the particular question and repeated it three times throughout her garbled answer. And that's exactly what it was. I told, she sound drunk, she sound drunk. And that was pretty much how it was for the entire interview. Like, she, I, I think she's, a, I think she, I'm, I think she's an alcoholic. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, but while Dana Bash asked some decent questions of Harris and Waltz, um, hold on one second. Um, she also asked plenty of softball questions that were a complete waste of time. Now, again, this was 18 minutes of actual interview that was aired, reportedly trimmed down from something longer. So it's no shock that so much of the interview was fluff and softball questions. And it's no shock that Dana Bash never called Harris out for blatantly lying. Um, it's also not shocking that Camilla was never presented with clips of her own words endorsing the exact opposite of what she claims to be about now. And Waltz wasn't pressured to explain why he lied about his service, his DUI arrest, um, and about using IVF. Bash just accepted his long-winded and weak response about his grammar, sometimes being wrong as a legitimate explanation. <clears throat> it has nothing to do with grammar. You literally said you... you 
You said you were literally carrying these guns, these weapons. You said that. That ain't got nothing to do with grammar. And then you lying about your rank. You stated your rank was, um, what was it, uh, whatever the highest enlisted was, when it wasn't. So it, that has nothing to do with your, your grammar, sir. It has to do with you lying. Well, let's play this clip. Um, you had to clarify uh, that you had said that you and your wife used IVF, but it turned out you used a different kind of fertility in order to uh, have children. And then when you ran for Congress in 2006, your campaign repeatedly made false statements about a 1995 arrest for drunk and reckless driving. What do you say to voters who aren't sure whether they Hold on. The, the reckless driving thing, they straight up lied. They straight up said it, it, it was, um, it, 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 he, he didn't get um, arrested for drunk driving. That was a straight up lie. That has nothing to do with grammar, sir. They can take you at your yeah. word. Well, I've been very public. I think they can see uh, my students come out, uh, former folks I've served with, and, and they do, they vouch for me. I certainly own my mistakes when I make them. No, the one don't. thing I'll tell you is of, um, I wished in this country wouldn't have to do this. I spoke about our infertility issues because it's hell, and families know this. And uh, I, I spoke about the treatments that were available to us that, that question, had those beautiful sir. children there. Um, that's lie? quite a contrast in folks that are trying to, uh, to take those rights away from us. And so... Uh, I, uh, I think people know who I am. They know that record. They've seen that. I've taught thousands of students. I've been out there. And, what do um, they got to do with it? I, I won't apologize for speaking passionately, whether it's guns in schools or protecting of reproductive rights. Uh, the contrast could not be clearer between what we're running against. The vice president's position on this has been clear. And um, I think most Americans get it if you've been through that. Um, I don't think they're cutting hairs on IVF or IUI. I think what they're cutting hairs on is an abortion ban and the ability to be able to deny families the chance to have a beautiful child. Never answered the question. Never answered the question. And Dana Bash, let him get away with it. And you see how the, how the contrast when she has an interview with them and has an interview with Republicans. With Republicans, she'll push back. And most of her pushback is untrue anyway. And she tried to, but she, she has absolutely no pushback with Tim Waltz whatsoever when we got this guy lying. I mean, this is just crazy. Pathetic, the article goes on to say. He said, trust me, you'll never see Donald Trump get such an easy interview. That's a fact. Not even from Fox News. Camilla was asked about the iconic photo of her giving her speech at the DNC, and Waltz got a question about his son being so proud of him at the, um, at the convention. I'm not even going to play that clip. Camilla's uh, responded to questions about Joe Biden's departure, from the race by claiming that she has no regrets about um, how she portrayed Joe Biden's cognitive health to the American public and seemed to double down on a lie. Everything is just fine with him. So let me let me go ahead. Let's play this clip here. Vice President Harris, you were a very staunch defender of President Biden's capacity to serve another four years. Right after the debate, you insisted that President Biden is extraordinarily strong. Given where we are now, do you have any regrets about what you told the American people? No, not at all. Not at all. I have, um, sir. I have, I have no regrets. I have no regrets that I lied to y'all. I'm a politician. I lie all the time. <laughs> served with President Biden um, for almost four years now, and I'll tell you, it's one of the greatest honors of my career, truly. Um, he cares so deeply about the American people. He is so smart and um, and loyal to the American people. And I have spent hours. He's loyal to the American people by um, selling selling his office to the ch to the, uh, anyone that'll give him money, to Ukraine, to the Chinese Communist Party, to anyone that'll give him money. Yeah, he's loyal to the American people, yeah. It's upon hours with him, be it in the Oval Office or the Situation Room. He has the intelligence, the commitment, and the judgment um, and disposition that I think the American people rightly deserve. In yeah, he has the disposition. That's why he shouts down um, journalists. <laughs> he yells and stuff. Yeah, that's a dis that's a great disposition. Their president. I mean, and she never answered the question. She never answered the question about. Um, um, not, not not telling the truth about his cognitive uh, decline. But the interview was pre-taped and split up over several commercial breaks. 
and I hope you wouldn't notice how little substance there actually was. As bad as it was, one can only imagine how bad the footage they didn't include was. I wish we could get our hands on that footage. I would love to see that. Um, man, I, I, I'm glad that I'm kind of glad that I didn't uh, do a live reaction because I'm um, it it, it would have just pissed me off with all the commercials they had. And it was only 18 minutes. But um, y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Leave your comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe. And check out JJThePsychotherapist.com for the latest in news. Until next time, peace.